What does food justice look like? What role do small-scale farmers play in creating a more equitable food system? According to a 2021 study conducted by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, 13.8 million households in America experience food insecurity due to a lack of resources. Meanwhile, industrial agriculture giants use extractive methods to sell low-quality, low-cost food, making it harder and harder for smallholder farms across the country to sell their produce and earn livable wages. Because the current food system isn't meeting the needs of American farmers or American eaters, we want to know, how can we create a food system that benefits farmers, eaters, and our Earth? To answer that question, we traveled to Solidarity Farm in Palma Valley, California, where farmers and co-owners Hernan Cavazos and Eli Igo have reimagined the relationship between farmers, eaters, and the land they both inhabit. By connecting with their local community, Eli and Hernan have spent the last 10 years not only building their own successful regenerative farm, but also helping establish Food Shed Small Farm Distro, a sustainable model that puts beautiful, nutrient-dense produce in the hands of marginalized, low-income eaters, all while guaranteeing farmers a fair, livable wage. We sat down with Hernan, Eli, and their fellow farmers, organizers, and activists to learn how small-scale regenerative farms could be the key to a more equitable food system. Heifer USA believes in celebrating the success of smallholder farmers. By putting the digital spotlight on regenerative farmers setting incredible examples, we can share their methods, inspire others, and multiply the social change they create. Our Raised Right series highlights the innovations of small farmers like Hernan Cavazos and Eli Igo of Solidarity Farm. Hi, my name is Hernan and I'm from Mazatlan, Sinaloa. And I'm a co-owner in Solidarity Farm. I'm also a co-director in Food Shed. I live in Palma Valley. This is where we're standing right now. My name is Eli Igo and I uh, was a co-founder of Solidarity Farm and as we've transitioned to Food Shed, my time has been spent more and more getting that distribution program up and running and then we both spend a lot of time co-parenting our three children. One of the missions of Solidarity Farm since the beginning was um, we wanted to grow healthy food for our kids and then that kind of transformed into creating healthy food for our community, for our neighborhood. We were social justice activists who had been working on a variety of different issues from immigration to health to environmentalism. And the food system is really at the intersection of all those things. Our mission was to activate this community-based movement where we can find other allies and support each other and show solidarity amongst each other, connect eaters to producers, and just connect new generations to the ground and to the food that we take in. We decided that it was time just to put our money where our mouth is and, and get back to the earth. So 10 years ago, we moved out here with four of our friends and we launched Solidarity Farm with the hope that we could create justice, learn from the people who are originally from this valley and to do right by that. In 2012, Nan and Ellie co-founded Solidarity Farm on a 10-acre tract of land owned by the Palma Band of the Luiseno tribe. San Diego County has more tribes than any other county in the United States, and Palma farms hundreds of acres of citrus and avocados. They had just purchased this land and weren't utilizing it yet, so they were allowing renters that they thought would be able to steward it appropriately to lease it, so it was a nice partnership from the get-go. I think it's inspired us to take a really broader look at how this land has been cultivated for the last 10,000 years. California's entire ecology is based on the indigenous people stewarding it. We all still have a lot to learn, and so we just do our best to help support each other. It's no coincidence that most immigrant uh, families here from South America or Mexico have some of the same health issues that some of the tribe around here. So for me as a farmer, it was encouraging to keep farming and, and produce 
an alternative, you know, that is resembles some of our traditions and culture. In addition to collaborating with the Palma Band, Ellie, Non, and the other co-owners of Solidarity Farm have begun training new farmers through an incubator farm program. At Solidarity Farm right now, we're running uh, three incubation farms. Um, and for us, it was a necessity that we start seeing in our food system. We have the training, we've done the experience, we can make some X amount of money. So now I'm starting to see we need more people. So in my head in Solidarity Farm, I was like, okay, what can we do to get more people? And it was hard to find new people. So we're like, well, let's farm new farmers. <laughs> We found this sweet spot where we're like, okay, we're going to go to this one size and then we're going to mentor other people to join us and then that's how we meet the market demand that's growing. This incubation program not only allows Ellie and Nan to teach technical skills to beginning farmers, but also allows them to collaborate with current and future farmers to imagine a more just food system. Our vision has has evolved over the years when we realized that it wasn't just about our own farm, it was about our entire food system and how small farmers, how we can help each other to achieve a, a bigger mission. That bigger mission is food justice. Food justice can be defined as communities exercising their right to grow, sell, and eat healthy food that is fresh, nutritious, affordable, culturally appropriate, and grown locally with care for the well-being of land, workers, and animals. But what does it look like to build a just food system from scratch? For us right now, food justice has a lot to do with the right food needs to get to the right people, but also we want to take it to the next level where us as farmers can come together and decide who do we want to feed. So for a long time, immigrants have been pushed to take all these jobs in California to produce a huge amount of the food percentage of the United States, but we never know where it's going. We don't have any ownership. We don't have any autonomy of that. So we want to propose a different type of food industry where the producers know where the food is going. Ellie and Nan have deliberately chosen where to distribute the produce grown at Solidarity Farm and it's not always at the upscale farmer's markets that boast high profits for small producers. I got tired of going to markets and spending hours and hours just unloading and unloading. The majority of the people on farmer's markets on the West Coast are now just boutique shopping. So for us, it's like, man, we need a better outcome. We need a better solution. And so there farm, we say, okay, it's okay if we produce less, but we wanna make sure it goes to a place that we, that we feel good about it. Like we know we can make two more dollars per strawberry flat if we do organically to a big market. But my heart gets better when I can sell the strawberry at two dollars less to communities in City Heights. City Heights, a neighborhood in East San Diego known for its ethnic and cultural diversity, is the primary community that Solidarity Farm has chosen to serve. Because the immigrant and refugee communities that live in this area often face barriers to accessing education and employment opportunities, poverty rates are particularly high in City Heights. This results in a lack of affordable options for grocery shopping. With very little access to nutritious food, many residents of City Heights suffer diet-related issues that create even more obstacles to living happy, healthy lives. Through their work as local activists and their years living in City Heights, Ellie and Nan saw their neighbors struggle to provide nutrient-dense food for their families and knew their community needed a change. For so long, we've had this system, even in regenerative agriculture, even in organics, where you know that extra effort that's going into creating beautiful food can only be for the wealthy and for the, the, for the people who can pay the most. And, I firmly believe that farmers deserve a just price for their food, but we have to do better. You know, we have to think about how we can create access and affordability for people or else all of the social issues that we're trying to deal with from climate change to health disparities, they're just gonna perpetuate. But that's where we see the crisis on this country, the disconnection between the ground and the plate and the food in the supermarket. I always get annoyed because all these magazines I get seeing, there's always something missing on their stories. You know, the most successful farmers are always white and they have somehow land. 
they're not relatable to enough yeah. people. I think that's the issue. And so finding those stories that more people can relate to will will help. And that farmers can take on these like larger social justice issues, you know, and that there's financial stability in it, I think is a message that we need to we need to send. I think people like Heifer USA are gonna be crucial for the next uh, 50 years on the United States on how the land gets shifted into more agricultural culture. You know, it really has to begin with farmers, those who feed and fuel this planet. We need to take responsibility for connecting directly with those folks who need access to that food the most. And we need to build bridges between those communities. There are ways to do it. There are creative solutions. We just need to lean into those and build allies and relationships with folks that can help us make that happen. One of the biggest ways Solidarity Farm has been able to leverage community connections to generate new sales opportunities is through the creation of Food Shed Small Farm Distro. This farmer-owned, farmer-operated distribution model aims to cultivate equity by aggregating local produce from small regenerative farms like Solidarity and distributing it to people who are committed to food justice or negatively impacted by inequities in our food system. My name is Ricardo Catano. My name is Monica Lin. My name is Adriana Barraza, and I'm a Food Shed co-founder. I'm one of the co-directors. I am Food Shed's logistic coordinator. Food Shed Small Farm Distro is about 50 farms, about 14 that collaborate really closely. 67% of the farms that make up Food Shed are BIPOC owned, more than half are owned by women. And our purpose is to feed activists that are trying to change the system and then also those who have been historically denied access to that healthy food. One of the reasons uh, Food Shed was created, it was out of a necessity to work with a lot of small farms of what is our bottleneck. You know, it's like, okay, so you wanna sell more produce, but in reality is that as farmers and business persons, we gotta cut sometimes the middleman. And in California, for example, the distribution companies get a big chunk of that. So for us it was like, okay, how can we deal with that? There's no other way than talking to more farmers, getting together, figuring out a good way of giving your produce some value, creating a distribution company that it gets owned by the farmers and then get that direct sell. For the founding farmers of Food Shed, many of whom have lived in City Heights, food justice is the main mission behind their work. Food justice uh, begins with having access to land and getting a living wage for the food you grow in a way that respects people's dignity and then being able to distribute it in a way that also respects people's dignity and, and gives people equal access. Growing up here in the City Heights, we didn't have a lot of access to local food. I think we all are worthy of eating healthier stuff. And the fact that we don't have access in this neighborhood to that type of food is an injustice. My favorite part of working in Food Shed in Sadie Heights is making our healthy food accessible to a community that usually doesn't have you know, access to local or organically grown food. These partnerships were forged out of mutual community involvement in order to create new opportunities for Food Shed member farmers to sell their products and for eaters in City Heights to buy from them without overextending their budgets. One of the most notable partnerships Food Shed has established is their Market Match program. So as Food Shed looks at building those bridges into the community, we have started a CalFresh CSA. CalFresh is SNAP, CalFresh is food stamps. Um, it's just California's version of that. And so when people use their CalFresh, we provide a 50% match through the Market Match program. And we are actively trying to advocate to be more accessible for folks. There's so many other barriers in place for people to even access the programs that are supposed to be there to help them. But just just creating that, you know, affordability piece is part of a just food system. And then the other thing is making sure that it's accessible. So Food Shed opened a storefront in City Heights. You know, it's within walking distance for folks so that if they need to come in and swipe their CalFresh cards, they can. In addition to the Market Match program, Food Shed has partnered with the University of California, San Diego to pioneer a new type of farm subscription box. 
we are working with UCSD, the University of California, San Diego, as our customer, and they are purchasing boxes for distribution through a fruit and vegetable prescription program. So they pay Food Shed to home deliver a box of produce that was prescribed by a doctor at their clinic. And so our customer is that low-income family that is struggling with a diet-related health issue, but it's being paid for with this institutional money. It's awesome from a farmer's perspective because we are locked into three years of 150 box deliveries and we don't have to really overthink that marketing side of it. These partnerships between food shed and community institutions bridge the gap between local farmers and low-income eaters in multiple ways. They create affordability and access to healthy food. They also streamline marketing and distribution so farmers can focus on farming. The farmers get to decide where we sell our produce and now having to fall into this heavy weight of selling your produce for the most expensive price to people that you don't care just because you need to make some money, you know, and then you ended up selling your produce to the highest bid, but it's now fixing the real issues of this country. We as farmers need to have some personal responsibility and be like, hey, you know what? That's okay. I don't need to make $120,000. I can make $80,000 but my produce is going to this place. I'm trying to pitch in and put something back in the community. I think too often we think that we have to overstretch ourselves. Oh, if we're gonna work in low-income communities, we can't ask for what we need, and that's just not true. We have to ask for what we need and we have to advocate to fill the gaps and we need to trust that people are going to value all the co-benefits that we bring to the table when it comes to being regenerative farmers. We need to educate them on all those co-benefits and then they can make up that gap in order to fuel the overall change that we all, we all know we need to make. The co-benefits of regenerative farming are an important selling point when building new partnerships. Regenerative farmers heal land, but they also heal people. By participating in these programs, Food Shed's institutional partners are not only supporting local farmers and eaters, but they're also supporting carbon sequestration and land regeneration. They're investing in healthier, happier populations. They're allowing a community to invest back into itself by limiting the influence of industrial agriculture. These co-benefits grow stronger communities, and farmers must be willing to emphasize their importance in order to build partnerships. It's not about who do you need to go out and meet, it's about who do you already know. Take those who do we already know relationships and turn them into producer and consumer relationships. It doesn't have to be any particular organization that you're working with. It could be a church. It could be a school that your kids go to. I think it's just being willing to invest and think about what do farmers really need in order to be successful. I took my son Ron to a baseball game today. There's this whole group of a bunch of families like super prioritizing the sports. How would it look like if we can do that to a farm? You know, if we have the same energy that people put towards sports in this country and to like farmers. Every Sunday, show up 10 people with volunteers and bring your kids and spend the day, you know, something like that. I feel like when, uh, when we start seeing that, that's when we're gonna start seeing the, the switch on the paradigm. I'm just laughing at what you, how you would really feel if 10 families showed up on a Sunday <laughs> to hang out with you. <laughs> I'll just say, here's Sally. In addition to establishing institutional partnerships with multiple co-benefits, Food Shed recognizes the need to educate consumers about the food they're receiving. We try to educate, we try to make sure that people understand why our carrots look different, why our lettuce is different, why certain crops don't grow in certain season. I think that the dream of food justice is when we humans understand that agriculture is a cycle. You have to make sure that people really understand the situation on a small farm. A lot of people are stuck in that mentality of that we grow food and then it's in a warehouse and they can just order it. And they don't understand that, no, we have to crop plan and we put the seeds in the ground for you. And so there really has to be a timeline that works with farming. The other thing, and I don't think this is too different from any other population, but you know, working class folks, poor folks, we're all busy. And so cooking has become something that we really just don't do. And so we have to invest a lot of time in um, helping people integrate what we're growing into their diets. Working with the community, we were thinking, oh, 
how can we communicate and, and have be able to talk about recipes. So what we did is we created a couple WhatsApp chats where everybody could post pictures of the food that they made. Whenever they have questions about what to do with the food that they didn't know, we were able to answer, give them a recipe, how to incorporate it to even traditional dishes that, that they probably have in their culture. And the fact that we are open like on those chats and there's that line of communication, it makes it so much easier and you can tell that they feel way more comfortable to try new things. I always remember one of my favorite things in, the, in City Heights. I did a few cooking classes uh, that were really fun with some of the senoras of the community. And it was eye-opening for me that an introduction to, to healthy food has to come up within our own culture. You can do that by finding partners. You know, we work with the County of San Diego that does cooking classes and we'll bring them out to the hub. We do a multilingual newsletter with recipes in it. There's lots of different networking kind of things that we do to help address that. Food Shed also relies on community health outreach workers called promotoras to educate consumers on prevalent health issues in their communities. They are members of the community who are the most active in their schools. You know, they're the ones that are always out talking to their community. It really helps overcome that barrier of an outsider trying to tell someone about behavior change. Many are volunteers, but we pay our promotoras as contractors to make sure that they're compensated for the amazing work that they're doing in their community. They're super essential. Every farm should have people who work in the community just to do that outreach. By facilitating this community outreach to help eaters incorporate fresh produce into their diets, Food Shed is making healthy eating accessible culturally as well as financially. The returns on that investment have proven life-changing for Food Shed customers. We have so many stories from people who say, I started eating this food, I hadn't had access to it before, I had arthritis, it's gone. One of our customers told me that she's lost like 40 pounds and that's something that she's been trying to do for ages. And so just having a support system, it doesn't feel like an impossibility to be healthier and thrive. Just personal victories. You know, another guy told me like, I couldn't play with my grandkids and now I can. There's people that get our boxes after like 10 years and that's big support. Definitely when customers tell us, you know, hey, thank you for being here. Those kind of things, it, it, it keeps you going. But the personal victories of Food Shed's distribution programs don't end with customers. The member farmers who participate in Food Shed have also benefited substantially from their newfound markets. To be able to be a producer on a small scale and not be stuck with the pressures and the unsustainability of, of agriculture in the industrial context. It's audacious, you know, to, to think that that's even possible, but with this network of farmers, you know, we're looking for ways to make that possible and with the support of community. But the food justice revolution doesn't stop there. Food Shed's work in City Heights is incredible, but it can't be the only place where these programs exist. In order to multiply the amazing benefits of affordable, accessible, community-supported agriculture, we need to think bigger. One of the only ways we see that small farms can survive is if we're united and if we can create more of them. There's gonna be a cool time, a very amazing time, when you guys can come to Solidarity Farm, but you stop in 20 little farms before you arrive here. I think that's the time where we're gonna see some change. Solidarity Farm is this tiny little, you know, small production farm. And we have been called to do a lot of education because there's an interest. And so we, instead of growing our operation, have chosen to sort of incubate and help create other small farm businesses. Even now, the incubation farmers that Ellie and Non mentor are learning how to build food justice with their farms. My name is Steven Larea. I am an incubator in Incubi under the mentorship of Solidarity and Non and Ellie. The thing that got me stoked on farming was, unfortunately, a lot of people starve every day in a lot of countries. So I wanted to learn how to farm to teach others how to farm. It's kind of like teach a man to fish and he'll fish forever. But if you teach a man how to teach a man to fish, then the whole world eats. They're providing an excellent model where I could either stay and help or I can pursue it in another area and bring that model to another place that needs it. As Solidarity Farm and Food Shed Small Farm Distro invest in their community, they set an example for regenerative farmers across the world.
We have folks in Baja Sur and in Tijuana that are also interested in doing a food shed type model. What we want to do then is the same thing we're doing with farming. Just mentor people into it, show them what we've been doing, and let them take it you know, in their direction, in their own ecosystem, and their own community. As more farmers look to Solidarity Farm as an example, we asked Ellie and Nan their best advice for small farmers, local activists, and community members committed to creating a more just food system. Find a group of people that you can team up. You don't have to reinvent the wheel by yourself. Pick a community to work in where you have a relationship and then build your kind of network and program around that. Grow the foods that that, that particular community wants to eat and then introduce, you know, sort of new things as you go. We knew 10 years ago we were for a long, for a long run. So we were like slowly building up and purposely staying small. So that's important for new people to know. Looking back at the journey that led Ellie and Nan to Palma Valley, Solidarity Farm and Food Shed Small Farm Distro, it's clear that their dedication to intentionally slow, sustainable growth was a huge element of the success they now enjoy. As they cultivated their first crops at Solidarity Farm, they also cultivated relationships with the farmers and eaters around them. As they built infrastructure for their regenerative farm, they also built partnerships with local institutions. When they created Food Shed, they created an incredibly valuable resource for the community of City Heights and new market opportunities for small local farms. And now, in addition to growing healthy, nutrient-dense produce, they grow new farmers in order to multiply the impact of their own hard work. Ultimately, Ellie and Nan's story teaches us that food justice is possible, but it doesn't happen overnight, and it can't be accomplished by just one farm. It requires farmers who care for the earth and the people who inhabit it. It requires eaters who support their farmers and institutions that fill in the gaps. It requires organizers, activists, advocates, promotoras, incubees, logistics coordinators, WhatsApp group chatters, friends, neighbors, community members who see the possibility of a just food system and care enough to make a change, who spend years fighting for food justice as fiercely as they can because they know their community deserves better. Is this what food justice looks like? I think this is a step in the direction of food justice. I think we still have a ways to go. I think we need we need more producers, we need more buyers, more people participating. And but I, I do think that this is this is what food justice looks like to us now. Want to learn more about Solidarity Farm, Food Shed Small Farm Distro, or any of the programs they utilize to create food justice in the San Diego area? Visit the social platforms on screen or in the description to connect with the farmers we've featured in this video. Or keep watching to learn how new farmers Derek and Paige Jackson built a successful regenerative farm from scratch and how you can do it too. Be sure to subscribe to Heifer USA so you never miss an opportunity to learn from fellow farmers right here on YouTube.